I'm not going to talk about how you can debug an uh, application container running behind a sidecar in Kubernetes using Jifira. So first things first, I'm Michael. I'm a software engineer um, and co-founder at Blue Shoe. Um, in my day-to-day -day business, I'm usually approaching Kubernetes from a developer's perspective. And um, yeah, if you want to reach me, then drop me a line at michael at unicube.io or find me on GitHub. So a quick glance on the agenda. First, I'd like to introduce you to the project itself, Jifira. Um, I prepared a, a little demo application um, as it's an OpenID Connect login flow with a backend and obviously a sidecar um, running the um, OpenID Connect things. Um, then I will look into what's inside. There is a bug hidden in the code, um, which I want to debug um, using VS Code. And in the end, I'd like to wrap everything up. So um, first, I'd like to um, know who of you considers herself or himself a software developer. <laughs> cool. And uh, how many of you are writing excellent code? <laughs> Wonderful, that's the spirit. <laughs> Well, um, my team and I started Jifira in order to create a completely new way of um, making uh, or having developers um, writing code with using Kubernetes right from the beginning. Um, and then afterwards testing and um, yeah, basically everything around um, uh, working with Kubernetes uh, and making this as convenient as possible, as convenient as a Docker Compose app, for instance. And um, how many of you have heard of Telepresence, Telepresence 2, or even use it? Okay, so I'm not bashing it too much. Well, um, why do we actually want to work with Kubernetes right from the beginning? Um, basically, um, what we're trying to do is promote really a service-oriented architecture to be um, applied to all kinds of modern applications. And what we'd like to see more often is that advanced Kubernetes patterns are becoming part of software architectures. And one of my favorite is the sidecar pattern for a number of use cases. Um, why Kubernetes from right from the beginning? So this is obviously a point coming from the 12 factors app. It says, um, I think it's factor 11 or so, that we'd like to have uh, a, a real high dev prod parity, which means if you're running your workloads on Kubernetes in production, it's probably a good idea to do this uh, during the development as well. Um, and we found that uh, current solutions, for instance, Telepresence 2, did not really match all of our requirements. So in uh, speaking about Telepresence, you cannot easily um, connect to a cluster and um, debug a, an application that runs behind a sidecar because what Telepresence do does is um, it um, puts a, another traffic agent into your de pod deployment, basically, which then intercepts traffic, and you are not able at this point to um, yeah, pass your traffic to some kind of um, um, a sidecar pattern here. Uh, another thing is that Telepresence 2 um, modifies your workloads in, in the development clusters, um, or even if you are... Uh, brave enough to do this in production. Um, and if, if there goes something wrong, so basically anything, the workloads um, are then still um, modified in the cluster and it, you, you will find a hard time to get rid of all the components. And these are um, things that we have been dissatisfied using Telepresence for almost two years. And so we decided to come up with our own solution, which is Jifira. Um, another thing, that um, Jifira is um, basically built around is that we'd like to provide all kinds of development toolings that developers are, are using nowadays already. Like, for instance, you can use your favorite IDE, whether it's VS Code or PyCharm or Vim or Emacs or something like this um, for um, uh, languages that support uh, support code hot reloading, we want to support this. Um, of course, you want to mount your current um, working tree, speaking about the source or other dependencies, as volumes into your current development container instance, overwrite environment variables, drop into in shell, and do all these things, right? And Jifira achieves this by spinning up a 
local uh, container instance of your application on a dedicated Docker network. And with a component uh, called Cargo, in this uh, case, it creates a WireGuard VPN connection to your Kubernetes cluster. It is completely automated. And using this connection um, and patching the network level of your container instance here, the application container will behave as it would run uh, directly within Kubernetes, especially when it comes to networking and um, everything around that. So here's my example application. Hopefully, this uh, will uh, work well. Um, I have a local K3D cluster running on my machine. So I have to put up the cluster configuration, port forwardings, mappings, um, the correct um, Kubernetes version. Um, I have to do a little bit of Helm charts. I have to do a little fiddle around with customize, apply a few um, YAML files as well, and work with cube control, obviously. And um, what I get once I applied everything, I will have a Kubernetes cluster, as I said, based on, uh, based on K3D. Um, I, I am going to install a Keycloak. Um, it's an identity provider um, with a custom realm and the, uh, my, my, my demo application as a client already installed. Um, I will have a test user with the required privileges in order to perform the OpenID Connect login flow. I need some sort of ingress config that supports this flow. And obviously, I need a workload with my demo application, which um, implements the sidecar pattern. And in this case, I will be using the famous Fast API framework, which is Python based. So, and um, in order to have this up as quick as possible, I will be using another tool that is coming from my team. It's called GetDeck. And all I have to do is run deck get on uh, this repository. So it's the Jafira demos. And the name of this demo application is called auth 2 demo And if my internet connection is not too poor, um, this will spin up the cluster and apply all the resources. Maybe we'll have a little detour at this point. I'll look into the deck file. So we have heard our like deck file today already. This is a more simple alternative, I think, which is less complex, but also less powerful. You can uh, specify a cluster provider, so we want to provide K3D or Kind and Minikube in the future and put a native configuration here. Um, and then there are DEX. The DEX is a new concept coming with GetDeck. It's um, 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 described as a, 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 the, the, a unit or the, the simple uh, smallest installable unit coming with GetDeck. And there's this O2 demo. Um, so we are using code-centric Helm charts here for Keycloak have a little configuration, then initialize this Keycloak instance locally um, and apply the workload for the old demo application. And then there's a Kubernetes dashboard here just for our developers. Wonderful. And um, GetDeck does exactly that. It spins up the cluster, applies all the sources. And um, yeah, yes, now, now I'm, I'm ready to, to work with this cluster. But first of all, I'd like to get back to the presentation, so what's inside. Um, with these workloads, I installed on the, on the right-hand side um, everything what is needed for Keycloak with an ingress running on Keycloak on my local domain with a service and a pod running the, the Keycloak instance. And on the left-hand side, there is my demo application coming with a dedicated um, domain on my local machine with a service. And here we are running a pod coming with the O2 proxy. So this is a third-party dependency in my application. It's installed as a sidecar, and it works like this. The traffic um, comes through my ingress configuration and um, hits the O2 proxy. And the O2 proxy is then handling uh, everything around um, authorization. And um, once the request is authorized, it gets upstream to my um, actual uh, backend application. So just a quick recall, what um, open ID, what, what the open ID connect flow is looking like. Um, so if I want to hit my backend application, it's uh, not readable very well here. So it's, it's over there. Um, and I hit um, the, the associated domain with my browser. I first hit the URL to reverse proxy, which redirects me to the identity provider. 
um, passing my credentials to the identity provider will uh, return an authorization code and a redirect to my backend application to the auth re uh, to reverse proxy, which then redeems the authorization code and in, ex in exchange receives the um, actual access token, which is then passed um, uh, in a header field to, to my backend application. Um, just a quick view um, how a sidecar is implemented. Um, maybe you already used this in, 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 in applications too already. Um, so this is the container section in my deployment manifest. And it says in, in the first line, there is this or 2 proxy, which is a standard component here, running on container port 8809, which is my port being served by the Kubernetes service. And I have a configuration in this of two uh, or two proxy config map, which is referenced in the end from, which states that um, I want to upstream to my of two demo app container, which is the second one here, which runs on the internal um, container port eight one five five. So this is basically everything that is needed to um, prevent unauthorized requests from hitting my um, application in this case. Wonderful. Let's see this in action. Um, get back to my shell. It says, uh, please find the app at or well, to demo on this port with username gfira, uh, john at gfira.dev. So I will call this. Um, and this is the uh, landing page of your to proxy. And it says, OK, sign in with OpenID Connect. I hit that button. And please notice how we get redirected to Keycloak. So this is a full-fledged um, OpenID Connect lock and flow on my local machine here, which is quite convenient for um, all kinds of development works, either for backend, but most of our front-end developers like to work with access tokens um, in order to leverage them in their front-ends as well. I'm just copying that. It's for a username and also goes for the password. Sign in. Wonderful. I'm seeing the output of my uh, fast API. Um, application backend, and it says hello world. And if I remember correctly, I can go to the items one, two, three route. And oh, okay. <laughs> this is a 500. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a bug here. And um, that's pretty much what I want to talk about with you next. Um, um, here you can see the code that is serving the items route. Um, and I think the first thing that comes to mind is a not too uncommon pattern. Um, if there is an if else branch, and in the if branch it checks if we are seeing a forwarded access token, and if not, so this is the else case, um, this might go into a Docker Compose setup, which does not leverage the um, OpenID Connect um, and your two proxy as a sidecar, and it simply does not extract the email address given in the token. So um, patterns like this are, are really anti-patterns, and we don't want to see this in, in the future and in a, not in our code, obviously. And um, this is like to show you why we are really um, promoting um, this uh, development approach. And as an attentive audience, you might already spotted a mistake in, in this snippet, but I want to keep this open for quite some time. So here is what, uh, when, when Gfira comes into play, so it's quite simple. You run a Gfira app, um, which uh, sets up Gfira with the uh, connected um, Kubernetes cluster. And then there are actually two um, scenarios um, how you can use Gfira. So the first is Gfira run which will create a local container instance running on your local machine. Um, and um, you will be able to, for example, add a new service to the cluster, which is not being ref reflected in the workloads already. Um, so you can create a completely no service and make it part of your service mesh. And then there is this Gfira bridge command, which effectively um, intercepts um, a container that is running in a pod in the cluster and um, tunnels the um, traffic that goes into that container down to your local uh, container instance, 
which will effectively make you able to write code and see your changes immediately reflected in, in the cluster. And obviously, for this demonstration, you can even attach a debugger to this container instance running on your local machine and um, with as many instances as you want. If you, for instance, want to debug two services that communicate with each other, both have uh, really well-documented contract testing, everything is working well, but sometimes there are bugs uh, hidden uh, in between two services communicating with each other in Kubernetes. And this is uh, really useful in order to hunt those bugs down. Um, you can write code, and if you're done, you run Jifira down, which will effectively reset the cluster to its original state. Um, if there's something going wrong, Jifira does not modify your workloads, so you could also easily delete the pod that was being intercepted, and it will be spawned back with the original one, right? Okay, so here's the first command. Um, it uh, has quite a parameter list, um, but I will go through it very well, uh, very quick. Um, so the first is the image. This is basically the one that is also deployed in the manifest running within the cluster already. Um, since I am spinning up a new container instance, I can also assign a name for further reference, and I want this container to behave as it would run in the Kubernetes namespace OAuth2 demo, which I just created. Um, I am mounting my um, source code from my local machine here into this um, container instance, and I am overwriting um, the startup command. So in this case, I will be using debugpy. This is an Python implementation of the uh, adapter debug protocol, which is available for quite a number of programming languages. Um, I can tell to wait for my debug client to connect. And if the client is connected, then it's after the uh, second dash M here, I will be starting uh, UVCorn, which is a Python application server with, uh, with the main script serving on port 8155. So this is then exactly the same as it is written in the workload manifests, um, except for the reload flag, which allows me to make changes to my code and the application server instantly uh, reloads this. Well, um, go, uh, heading over to uh, Visual Studio Code, as I said, um, I can check kube control, control get an S to see, okay, there is my auth2 namespace, and just to have a quick look at the workloads running in it, it's auth2 demo. Yeah, it's a Kubernetes dashboard and the key cloak and a Postgres um, serving as backend for key cloak. It's a database and now I'm running Gfira up. And Gfira up, as I said, is now going to install all cluster side components, which is basically an operator that um, is um, used in order to create the cluster side um, infrastructure. Um, and it also installs the um, WireGuard um, endpoint within the cluster in order to set up the VPN connection. Um, yeah, depending on your internet connection, this may take a few seconds. There's an open feature request playing some easy listen listening music here. <laughs> Wonderful. So, um, of course, I created a little note here so I can just paste in. So this is the command that I shown you already. And it started me a local um, container instance. I can inspect Docker PS and I see my fast API demo application. This is now running as part of the cluster, but since there is no uh, connection from um, Kubernetes objects to that particular container, I won't be able to receive any traffic here. Um, I could instead create requests in this container and um, work like a new service that is not being consumed by any adjacent service in the workloads. Um, but this is just one of the first use cases uh, for Gfira. So now I'm going to attach my debugger. Uh, but before I can do this, I need to figure out the local IP address of my uh, container. Um, and it's this one. Uh, by the way, this will be a uh, feature of Gfira in an upcoming release to make this a bit more convenient. Um, 
I go and say start debugging. Okay, why does it start immediately? Arc. Just restart visual view code. Wonderful. I can say remote attach. And here I can paste, no, not paste, copy here, paste it there on the default port. And as you can see, um, the application is um, started already, so my debugger is connected to this application. Um, and now, getting back to my slides, I will um, create a Gfira bridge in order to replace the container with the bug running inside my cluster with the instance that I just started here. So it's Gfira bridge. Um, um, on the one end of my bridge, I will have my fast API demo. So this is the container instance that I recently started. And then I want to target all pods of the deployment of to demo in the namespace of to demo. And um, so this will, if you have a replication of two, three, or more than one, basically, um, Gfira will create a bridge for each of those pods. And um, within every pod, I'd like to target the container or to demo app. You remember, it's the one behind um, my sidecar. And um, then I can do the port forwarding. And I also can uh, assign a name for this bridge, even for further reference, if I want to get rid of the bridge um, afterwards. So I can do this. This command in my terminal. Clear. And it will take a few seconds to come up. Um, what happens here is that Gfira um, places a special proxy in, in the container of the pod that is already running and dynamically configures it to. Um, have a dedicated target for the traffic. So this is what happens here, and my bridge is established. And now I will be able to get back to my ingress and see the hello world output. And this should be okay. Here's here's a, here's a um, request log. So I can have a few more requests, and um, hopefully you can read this. Um, well, and now um, I'm trying to inspect my token, and so I can just simply place a breakpoint here and get back to the items route on one, two, three, and my VS Code instantly comes up, um, holding the execution at my breakpoint, and now I'm able to introspect the um, um, access token in order to see what's going on here and. Yeah, it's an email with a lowercase, actually. So if I hit the play button, of course, I could have read the log output here, but where's the fun in this case? So of course, this is quite simple, um, but I think all of you know when, when a debugger comes in handy. So I can just simply make this a lowercase e, um, hit the save button, the application reloads. Oh, there's still this breakpoint. Just let me mute it. Wonderful. And so I have fixed the bug. Um, my output is now generated correctly, and it extracts the email address coming from the access token. Wonderful. Um, yeah, basically that's it. I can now commit and push and be very confident about this working in integration and production scenarios as well. So. Yeah, I fixed the bug. It was a lowercase email here, uh, wrapping everything up. Um, I hope I could have shown you how to um, create a Kubernetes native development approach with advanced Kubernetes patterns, if a sidecar is sort of an advanced pattern, um, and making this also available for developers. And um, your developers, I mean, 
you probably know this too, do not in every case want to switch the development, uh, uh, development environment in case of the editors. So everyone is basically like to stick with the, their favorite IDEs and toolings and stuff. And so um, Cuban, uh, Jufaira could be uh, useful for you to make this possible in the future. Um, with this workflow, we don't need any more Docker Compose or Vagrants or custom scripts that do not really fit the production system. And if you want to follow along this demo, then you can go to this link. Um, and if you're interested in using GetDeck as well, then have a look. And I, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much.